All right. As I've been kind of previewing through the day, we're now moving to these back to back to back talks from the different organizational behavior professors. I feel like this has kind of been a red thread through the conference so far that people have been kind of talking about to the best of their ability without maybe some of the words, vocabulary, and and studies I think that you're going to hear in the next little over hour. And so we're going to start with Denise Rousseau. Denise is the H.J. Hines Professor of Organizational Behavior and Public Policy. She's also the director of the Institute for Social Enterprise and Innovation and chairs the Healthcare Policy and Management Program. And she's going to talk to you guys a little bit about evidence-based management today. So, Denise, I will hand it over to you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you, Sean. This is my pleasure. It's an honor to be with you all because, especially in this VUCA world, high uncertainty and unpredictability, evidence has more critical role than ever, and you are its most important deployers. Without managers with expertise and access to evidence, the whole world implodes. So I'm going to talk with you briefly about what is evidence-based management. And my goal is to motivate you, if you get intrigued, to connect to some websites that have both training materials, but other uh, discussions and illustrations of evidence-based practice. I'm going to use them to tell my story. And I have kind of three core ideas to share with you. So first, here's my elevator pitch. You know, basically the idea is this, since uh, we have entrepreneurs on this call, the central premise of evidence-based management or evidence-based practice is this. Decisions should be made with the best available evidence from multiple sources, multiple sources, key idea, okay? But what's evidence? Evidence is information, it's facts and data that support or contradict a claim, an assumption, or a hypothesis. Information doesn't just exist in a data file. It has to be interpreted by a person who has a belief. Is business good or not so good? Is this a great opportunity or a likely dead end? That what if is the claim, the assumption, or the hypothesis? And the evidence is always, we think about it as, does it support or contradict our claim? Evidence can be lots of stuff. It can be scientific research findings. It can be your organizational data, your own impressions, your benchmarking, best practices you've observed, and your personal experience, and what the stakeholders you are concerned with and when you make decisions have as their interests. All managers and all leaders, you and I every day, base our decisions on evidence. But here's the other key idea of my elevator pitch. But many managers, really almost all managers, pay little or no attention to the quality of the evidence and base their decisions and their use of it on too few sources. So the key idea here is that evidence quality varies. Even your financial information and its quality can vary as a function of reporting quality, as a function of its timeliness, as a function of how error prone um, it is and how much uncertainty there is in the environment that might affect your ability to interpret your financial data. So quality of evidence varies and we use too few sources. And one of the things that we've learned is that especially as people are more senior in organizations, they're actually a little bit less interested in evidence. You go up to the senior ranks of companies and people are less interested in more facts. They're less interested in talking with people with different opinions and a little bit more confident that their insights and opinions are valid. So it's one of the paradoxes of having power in organizations is a declining interest in gathering more information. I'll ask you to check your own experiences with your own managers and a little self-reflection, even with ourselves. When you say, who do we have lunch with? The people who will tell us new and different things or the people who are going to tell us the same things? 
there's a large taste on the part of human beings for confirmation of existing beliefs. And it's for that reason, getting more and different kinds of evidence is important. So I'm going to give you an illustration of what evidence-based management, tapping multiple sources of evidence, what it looks like in the wild, okay? And what it looks like is, I I suspect uh, you all remember that morning in January 2009, when Sully Sullenberger and co-pilot Jeff Walsh and I think it's 166 passengers and crew landed, crash landed on the Hudson River. So thinking about that, I'm going to make a pitch that you think about the Sully movie with Tom Hanks, but at all of the uh, descriptions that you've read about that day and how decisions were made in getting that disabled U.S. aircraft to land on the Hudson, think about it as evidence-based piloting. Okay, so what does that mean? So Sully Sullenberger, uh, who you, now you've all seen, it doesn't really look at all like Tom Hanks, but a handsome, upstanding fellow himself, just as he is, is a very interesting person. Chesley Sullenberger, is a U.S. Air pilot at the time, had been for 45 years a pilot. He had been, at the time, 2009, a visiting scholar at the UC Berkeley Collaborative on Catastrophic Risk Management. This pilot, because pilots only fly, you know, maybe eight to 10 days a month, for his free time, worked as a visiting scholar at the University of California, Berkeley. He lived in Danville, not too far from Berkeley, doing research on how to make decisions that maintain safety despite technological complexity and crisis conditions. He was on a research group asking, participating in the design of studies to understand how to make better decisions under crisis conditions. So one aspect of the evidence available to him is research background. Second, Sully Sullenberger had a lot of reliable and valid organizational facts at his fingertips that day as he's disabled aircraft, the engines are dead, trying to find a place to park an airplane, crash land, in a survivable fashion somewhere in the vicinity of New York City. He had written at that point in 2009 and analyzed aviation accident reports for over 20 years because part of what he did when he wasn't flying was he worked for the NTSB, helping them understand what the implications of accident reports were for cockpit resource management and for training pilots. So not only did he have participation in research, knowing about catastrophic risk management, he also had organizational knowledge. Third. Sullenberger himself had worked on his own professional judgment. Not only does he know the science, does he know organizational data related to safety, but his formal education was considerable. Sully is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy. He holds master's degrees from Purdue in industrial psychology in the University of Northern Colorado. His professional judgment was honed by having studied decision practices so that he knew at what point to follow the checklist and at what point to open up, innovate, and scan the horizon to look for a safe locale to land. And importantly, the role of decision aids, evidence-based decision aids, that day while Sully's scanning the horizon to find a place to land the plane, turns out, of course, it is the river, his co-pilot, Jeff, is working through the binders of checklists which talk about how to manage a safe crash landing ultimately on the water. So we have the flexible scanning of the environment supported by decision supports that handle the routine and settled aspects of crash landing a plane. And last but not least, fourth source of input to the decision, fourth source of evidence is attention to the stakeholders of the decision. So and this is the ethics and responsibility component of evidence-based practice. The last person to leave the plane, Sullenberger, twice walked down the plane's aisles to make sure that all the passengers had gotten off. And his last act on board was to grab the passenger list to make sure when they got on shore that they could verify that all passengers and crew had been rescued. So critical idea here was his attention to what's how is the condition of the crew and the passengers pertain to my actions. What do I need to do to make sure everybody's safe? Sullenberger concluded 
in his own words, he said, one way of looking at this event might be that for 42 years, I've been making small and regular deposits in the bank of experience, education, and training. And on January 15, 2009, the balance was sufficient. I could make a very large withdrawal. Key idea here in my last few minutes in talking with you are evidence-based management is a means to improve decision quality. And what it does is it combines multiple sources of evidence. Sullenberger didn't go and look up answers in a database while he's trying to crash land the plane. He primed the pump that day in January because he'd been partnering with academics to learn the fine art and science of decision making in a crisis. He had the organizational data at his hand because he had already read aviation accident reports. And so in one sense, it was a a blessing to have such an astute pilot there. He had deep personal expertise and knew how to assess the effect on other people of the decisions he was about to make. We see in this example a lovely illustration of what we think of as uh, evidence-based practice. The use of multiple sources of evidence from science, practitioner judgment, organizational facts, and stakeholder concerns to make a, a better decision. The core ideas I suggest uh, for you all here is the notion that when your job is to make decisions, it's really important, A, to know how your mind works. Uh, And so much of what is evidence-based practice is grounded in the idea that people can't think of everything all the time. We are what's called boundedly rational, bounded rationality. And I wish I could see your hands and I'd have you raise your hand to say, how many of you have heard of bounded rationality? That's a critical concept. And actually it was identified first at Carnegie Mellon 50 years ago by Herbert Simon, one of our Nobel Prize winners. And he made the point that for the most part, people's decisions are not only biased, but that we have a disease called what you see is all there is. It's hard to really have the big picture perspective. So pump priming to develop one's capability in advance of the need is what Sully Sullenberger and evidence-based practice is very much um, aligned with. And so what I want to to kind of conclude with is the idea, because I understand I have till three and I want to respect your time, um, that evidence-based management is a attention to multiple sources of evidence. Uh, it's skills that involve knowing, uh, is this good evidence or weak evidence? What stakeholders should I listen to? What practitioners should I ignore? But it is a means to overcome three problems all of us have as human beings. Our own bounded rationality, we can't think of everything. The small numbers problem of our own individual experience. I mean, you can only run so many businesses, make so many new product decisions, hire so many people, and based on the outcomes of those decisions, learn how to make them better. Our small numbers problem of human life is a difficult environment in which to learn to be better and better at something. And last but not least, because of our cognitive biases, we see patterns in places that there really is no, there's only randomness. All I'll ask you to think about, last time you looked up at the at the moon, what did you see? I personally see my brother, Tom. I always see a man in the moon, even though I know it's not there. The human problem is our cognitive limits. Evidence-based practice is a way of offsetting our cognitive limits by developing critical thinking, better decision supports, and tapping multiple sources of evidence. And if you are interested in learning more about this, I'm going to direct your attention and offer you uh, first the chance to talk with me because I would be delighted to. I am Denise at cmu.edu, but we also have a website for the Center for Evidence-Based Management that would give you access to training materials and other very interesting people talking about their own evidence-based practice. But the critical idea is better decisions by more sources of evidence vetted for quality. That was amazing. Thank you so much. 